Hello, welcome back to my channel and my playthroughs of Arkham Horror. I've been a bit out of the streaming channels lately because I've been playing other things with my pals. Uh, one have to do that also <laughs> uh, sometimes so my streaming and YouTubing has been a bit of uh, on a pause but I'm back and I will be in and out sometimes because of this we have to play with our mates also we can't uh, just be YouTubing can we? no well um, after my uh, utter defeat uh, against Yig, uh, a bit demoralized there, I have to admit, but I'm, I will be trying again with other investigators. Now, um, house ruling that the investigators that uh, were eliminated or devoured uh, will not be joining the pool again. So they're currently out of the pool. Now, we're gonna start with deciding uh, which uh, investigators we're gonna play with. And we're gonna do it like last time, we're gonna give it a bit of a shuffle. And uh, just we're gonna roll a die and pull it from there. To see how things will be decided. There you go. And we need D6 then. We get it up. And we get number three. You can zoom in a bit uh, a bit for you. Yeah, that's a three. So we go one, two, three. Oh yeah, can turn it up. Uh, let's see. We're gonna be playing with Dexter Drake, the magician. Um, sanity 5, stamina 5. Uh, he's gonna be starting in the, the old magic shop, fittingly. Starting with some money and a spell, shriveling. Uh, yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's a spell slinger, then it's no. <laughs> Wow, he's a magician and he's the spell slinger. So his lore is quite high. He's quite fast, speed five, and he's sneaky. And uh, not so bad in a fight, also. So it's it's good, quite good. Magical gift. Whenever the great Drake draws one or more cards from the spell deck, he draws one extra card and then discards one of the cards. So we can cycle through the spell deck quite fast. The story so far. After returning from his stint in the army during w, uh, World War I, Dexter became a stage magician and proved to be very successful at his trade. But he always longed to find real magic. As they say, be careful what you wish for. Years later, in a rundown store, Dexter came across a burnt and torn fragment of the Necronomicon itself. Uh oh! Intrigued by this ancient piece of occult knowledge, Dexter became to use his wealth in search of the truth about the ancient lore and what he found horrified him. Now the more he learns, the less he wants to know, but his studies have led him to believe that a great evil will soon rise in Arkham. He knows that he may well be the only person with the ability to stop this evil from swallowing the world. So he has come to that sleepy town to speak with the proprietor of Ye Old Magic Shop, one of the few magic shops that contain true lore, and not merely the stage tricks he once studied. Here we go for you. Next to Drake. We'll be entering the stage. So I think I will do a shuffle again and a roll a die. We add everything together. Cut. And we roll a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
And we got Luke Robinson, the dreamer. 773 stamina. That's a bit low. Uh, he's starting in the dreamlands actually. Some dollars and a clue, yeah. Gate box to start with. Uh, focus of one is quite alright. Very high will. He's six in will. Uh, sneaky fellow. Um, yeah, it's quite alright in a fight. Now, he's an experienced dreamer. And if face, Luke gains one clue token each time he enters an otherworld area or is lost in time and space. So, each time he enters otherworld and an area there, he gains clues. Heirloom, Luke's gatebox cannot be lost or stolen unless he allows it. And as a star, Luke starts in the first area of the Dreamlands, he begins the game delayed. So, yeah. Uh, let's read his story. It was many years ago when Luke discovered the Dreamlands. He climbed down the 70 steps of light slumber, faced the judgment of Nasht and Kamenta, and walked through the doors of sleep into the another world. There, Luke had grand adventures, returning each night while he slept to explore the strange and wonderful land he discovered. In time, he began to start seeking the deeper mysteries of the places he went and the, big, and the beings he talked to. He peeled back layers of secrecy until he came across a great truth. The dreamlands were real and he could physically travel there. Luke wasted no time. He settled his affairs in the waking world and gathered up the mystic puzzle box his uncle had left him. Then he traveled to the gateway he lear he'd learned of and passed through it for what he thought was for good. But word has come to him in the golden fields of the dreamland that the great evil is awakening and the waking world is in danger. So gathering up his possessions once more, Luke prepares to return to Arkham to help defeat this ancient evil. After all, although New England may seem dull and provincial after the splendors of the dreamlands, it's still home. So he's returning home in his PGs. Yes. Awesome. Luke Robinson there. We could do with some fighters. Let's have to pull some out now. Cut it. That's a three. One, two, and three. Now there's a fighter for you, Mr. Mark Carrigan, the soldier. Three sanity, seven stamina. Starts in South Church. He starts off with a flamethrower and a Molotov cocktail. Very promising. Uh, yeah, well, he's fast, he's sneaky, he's a good fighter. Not that best mind. He's lucky. Uh, one man army. You cannot be arrested or delayed. Yeah, well, there you go. <clears throat> the story so far, yeah. most people think Mark Cargan is crazy. They can't blame him if he is. He's back from the war. He's seen things no man should see, and there's plenty who came back broken in body and sp or spirit. But Harrigan came back in one piece, all right. He had Sophie. <laughs> Sophie believed him. She believed when she, he wrote her about the things he saw. Not the men killing other men, but the other things, the monsters. She believed, and that was enough to keep him sane in the trenches. Enough to keep him alive. Then he came home and went to visit Sophie, and he found out that the reason she believed him was that she had one of these creatures inside her. Ash. <laughs> Eating her from the inside out. As he watched in helpless horror, she faded away into the air, screaming as the thing finished its meal. Now everything, th everything, everyone thinks Mark Carrigan is crazy. Maybe he is. Maybe he's finally lost it. But he knows the monsters are real and they're here and he's got to stop them. As he crouches down in front of the altar in the South Church, he prays for Sophie's soul and he prays for forgiveness for the many, many sins he's about to commit all over this for God forsaken town. Holy macaroni! That's one horrific story for you. 
his girl was eaten inside out by a monster and he's back to take revenge. It's taken alien style. Whoop, is there a monster in there? See? And we have a four. One, two, three, Mr. and a four. And we do get Jacqueline Fine, the psychic. Seven sanity, three stamina. She starts off in the curiosity shop. And seven dollars, some clues, enchanted jewelry, yes. Well, speed four, fight four, she's an all rounder. High lore, very good. Precognition, Mythos. Once per turn, when a Mythos card other than the story continues is drawn, Jacqueline may spend two clues to discard that myth myth Mythos card uh, without effect and draw another one instead. The second Mythos card then takes effect. So, make sure that she has some clues then, so we can cancel rumors and stuff. And other things. Jacqueline witnesses the future every night. Her dreams are filled with things that have not yet come to pass. Usually terrible visions of blood and fire. This time is no different. She has dreamed of the city called Arkham, a quiet town that is to be destroyed by a terrible creature before the world is plunged into indescribable chaos for a thousand years. Her dreams have never been wrong before. Unable to ignore this latest vision, Jacqueline did some research and found the location of the doomed city. Now she has come to the place that haunts her to try and stop the destruction she knows will come. Drawn to an image from her darkest dreams, she, take, she takes a deep breath as she enters the curiosity shop, a place she knows will soon become a nightmare made flesh. <laughs> okay. I love the stories of these characters. They are really awesome. So there you go, um, same setup as I did last time, I'm going to include the um, uh, Fario expansion, because I quite like it. And uh, let's dig out our Alice, it's a total Alice with all the expansions. Uh, oh wait, uh, let's decide the ancient one first. Now. Uh, if I pull out an ancient one from other expansions like uh, uh, Dunwich, uh, Kingsport Horror, uh, and so on, I will uh, I will add that city uh, tile to the board. Okay, um, so let's hope we do that. I find that quite enjoyable. And if I do, I will include the cards, of course, uh, with the game. So we will see the cards, the items, and we have a, a quite few of the ancient ones to go through. And this time, if it wakes up, I'm gonna do a correct battle. Not fumbling it like I did last time. Now let's have the, oh, have the die this side. Whoop. Everything is falling over. It's a six. And we do one, and we do two. Three, four, and a five, and a six. And we're gonna face. Are you excited? I'm excited. Dun dun dun. We're gonna face. What? What? Run, take off. Yeah. Crab thingy. Uh, it seems like this is a king sport horror. So we're gonna set up the stage for Kingsport then. Cool. That's um he's a minus four in uh, in uh, combat uh, worshippers. Yeah, Ran Tegoth is worshipped by the twisted creatures of the tundra. Gnopke gain nightmares one. Okay. Start of battle, Ran Tegoth. Yeah, that's the start of battle. I have to remember to read that. He's a Doom Track of 11, so it goes quite fast. 
Uh, insatiable hunger. While Rante God stirs in his slumber, any cultist that is drawn from the monster cup is placed on this sheet. The terror level then increases by one. A doom token is added to the doom track and a replacement monster is drawn. Oh my god, so he eats cultists. Wow. His physical immunity, so I have to get some magical weapons. And he drains bloods from the victim, so it's stamina then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's it. We're gonna face Ran Tegoth. So I we're gonna we're gonna do the setup and we're gonna give the characters stuff. Okay, let's start out. Um, Dexter Drake. I found his. Figure. I'm gonna place him where he is supposed to be afterwards. I'm gonna do the general setup um, after this intro. So when we kick off uh, round one, it will be all be ready. Uh, now let's see Dexter Drake. We're gonna add the personal history, of course. Dexter Drake. It was clear that the great Drake was in over his head. There was no one to equal him for stagecraft and illusions. But when it came to the real thing, well, Dexter had to admit, when it came to genuine magic, he was a talented amateur at best. Unfortunately, it had become abundantly clear that the talented amateur was not that the world, what the world needed now. It was a sink or swim time. Dexter Drake. Okay, Dexter Drake, the great Drake. Pass. Each time Dexter draws a tome, put a clue token on this card. If there are two clue tokens on this card, place Sorcerer in play. Fail. If Dexter is driven insane, place Phony in play. So that's what we have to keep a lookout for. Now, what anything else does he start with? Well, he starts with $5 and a spell, which are called Frivoling. So let's get that dug out. Yeah. There it is a shriveling. There's a shriveling spell for him. Let's read it a bit. Shriveling, it's a offensive spell. Casting modifier minus one. Sanity cost one, just to cast it. Magical spell. Any face, cast an exhaust to gain plus six to combat checks until end of this combat. Now, this is what we are gonna focus on, I think, to get magical spells to kill off uh, Ran Tegoth, at least. Or, um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna also encounter some um, weapon immune monsters, so we have to have something to deal with those. Well, this is the fixed possessions for Dexter Drake. Now let's draw out a common item for him at random. Uh, get the shuffle. See what it starts with. Now Dexter is gonna have an old journal. That's a tome. Well, that doesn't count towards his personal story because this is the starting equipment. Exhaust and spend one movement point to gain to make a lore minus one check. If you pass, gain three clue tokens and discard old journal. So basically he can get clues. Good. So that's one common item for him. Now we have to dig out what unique item. So you got the unique item deck. Uh, 
and I did say wrong actually it's not Kingsmouth it's uh, Innsmouth <laughs> Kingsport is something else so it's Innsmouth uh, city board we're gonna dig out let's see and cutty and we start with an alien statue movement Exhaust to spend two movement points and one sanity to roll a die. If the die is a success, draw one spell or gain three or gain three clue tokens. If it's a failure, lose two stamina. Hmm. Doo -doo -doo. Not bad for Dexter Drake. Now he gonna have two spells drawn at random. From the spell deck, then. Again, I can give the spell deck a good toss around. And let's okay, see. And let's see. And first one is Wither. Costing modify plus zero, sanity cost zero, and it's a magical spell. Any face cast next source to gain plus three to combat checks until the end of this combat. We have to see if we can pass some spells around, I guess. Second spell is also Wither, so, oh, well. Even more incentive to pass them around. He's, you know, has two spells of the same spell. Now, a skill. I have my skill deck here. We have to toss around. If I'm sniveling, I'm sorry for that. I have been catching a bit of a cold lately. I'm recovering, but I may maybe sound a bit stuffed. Mythos lore, actually. Ah, minus one sanity, maximum sanity. Exhaust instead of spending one clue token. Okay, well, this is one free clue then, but it costs him one permanent sanity. Well, that's, well, I'm not satisfied, but it's okay, after all with that. Um, is it a, this a Dunwich? Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, I will allow it. And, do 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 do. It says, um, I don't know if we're gonna play this and uh, any face whenever he draws one card from the spell deck he draws one extra card and then discards one of the cards if that uh, applies when he gets his starting uh, possessions but yeah well either way you're gonna play it like this um, Dexter Drake has got his items I will set him up and we will take next character Now here is Luke Robinson, he's also got a personal story. Walking through Arkham's drab streets, Luke was compelled by a memory. In this world there was a friend, one of such ability that the coming storm could be avoided. But where to find this one? There were many doors in Arkham, and many of them led to unpleasant places. But Luke would visit them all and continue his search. Okay. Searching. Pause. If Luke has three or more gate trophies, place found you in play. Hmm. So he's searching for someone. If there are four or more Elder Sign tokens in play, place given up for lost in play. Hmm. So we have to hurry up before we seal everything. Ah, yeah. Okay, dokey. Here's his standy. Now let's get him. Needs. He starts off in Dreamlands, and he starts off delayed. That means he starts on his side, so basically it doesn't move. Um, now, six dollars. Yoke. Here you go. And uh, one clue token. 
and one unique item which is a gate box so let's dig out the gate box for him where is it yes here's a gate box now it's a fancy thing uh, gate box is uh, uh, any phase when you return to Arkham from another, another other world you can return to any location with an open gate not just those leading to the other world you were in so you can choose where to arrive from and random one unique item Luke Robinson is one of my favorite characters, actually. Let's hope he can fare well in this. He starts with an Elder Sign. Luke. Luke. Use the Elder Sign, Luke. Let's see. There's two spells. Let's try not to draw two equal spells. Same sort again. And we use a cutscene and we first spell is a shriveling spell. Well we've seen this. Luke also start off with shriveling and bind monster. Casting modifier plus four sanity cost sanity cost two. Any face cast and discard this spell to pass one combat check. You must roll successes, successes equal to the monster's toughness to cast this spell. This spell, uh, yeah. This spell doesn't work on ancient ones. Well, yeah. So you can bind the monster and discard it. Hmm. Pass them. Pass a combat check. Cool. And finally, he has to get one skill because he's skillful. He has learned something in the years. Psychology. When you make any will check, add plus one to each die you roll for purposes of checking for successes. Uh, a roll of three becomes a four. Yeah. Clarifies it. That's Luke Robinson and his starting possessions. Now let's just set him up. Here is more Carrigan. He also has a story you have to read. When the envelope came in the mail, Mark didn't open it right away. He told himself that he wanted to savor it, that he wasn't really just scared. It's possible he wasn't even lying to himself. Finally, after a drink to steady his nerves, he tore open the yellow paper, photographs and newspaper clippings, and pages and pages of typewritten text spilled out. At last, he knew what killed Sophie and where to find it. Cool. Mission Relia Pass. If Mark claims a Relia Gate Trophy, place Mission Accomplished in play. We have to get him to Relia and we have to get give him a trophy. If Mark is reduced to zero sanity, place Fail You in play. Hmm. Ooh, and he's got three sanity, so we have better watch that. Uh, yep, you have to get a standing also. He starts off in South Church, Church, I mean, and he gets one, two, three, four dollars. No less than three clue tokens. Two common items, which are a flamethrower and a Molotov cocktail. Let's see if I got the flamethrower in here. I think that's a Dunwich. 
equipment. Yep, it seems like that's a Dunwich thing. I have to dig out the Dunwich box and dig out the flamethrower to give him. I also think the Molotov cocktail is the same thing. So, uh, be just a sec, I'm gonna get some weapons. And here's the Molotov cocktail and flamethrower. Let's take a look at them. Flamethrower, well, it's a physical weapon. And it face exhaust before making a combat check to gain plus seven to that check. It's a two hander. Uh, Molotov cocktail, physical weapon, plus six to combat checks. Discard after use, so this is a one shot. And it's one hander. Cool. Uh, random possessions. Well, he gets one unique item. Book of Zian. That's a toe. Movement exhaust and spend two movement points to make a lore minus one check. If you pass, draw one spell, lose one sanity, and put one stamina token from the bank on Book of Zian. If there are two stamina tokens on it, discard Book of Zian. So there's spells to be gained from this book, and we do need spells. And also he gains one skill one. He gets informant. <laughs> During the upkeep phase, if you are in Innsmouth and both of the spaces on the Feds raid Innsmouth track that are the same color as the neighborhood you are you're in are empty you may spend one clue token to place clue tokens on both of those places hmm cool so if i'm in like yellow blue or green spaces in ismuth i could spend one clue tokens to place clue tokens on both of those responding places cool you could need that because in Innsmouth uh, there's a deep rising track which we have to keep our eye at and there's a feds raid Innsmouth track so we will be looking at that at the setup so that's the skill for Mark Harrigan we're gonna set him up and we're gonna do Jacqueline Fine last Here is Jacqueline Fine. And let's have a read. Jacqueline was having wishes again. One in particular kept haunting her. One face, a face in a crowd. If she could find that one face, she could find out what it meant. Was it the key to the whole thing or merely another red herring? The face. Pass if Jacqueline has two or more allies. Place Vision of Hope in play. If terror level reaches three, place Vision of Despair in play. Ooh, <laughs> I think we're gonna see the end of that. We're facing uh, Ran Tegoth as we are. Uh, she has seven dollars to begin with. It's quite awesome, a lot of money. She has some clue of what's going on. She has two clue tokens and she has one enchanted jewelry, which is a unique item. Uh, let's take that out, here it is. It's enchanted jewelry. Any face, put one stamina token from the bank on enchanted 
enchanted jewelry to avoid losing one stamina. If there are three stamina tokens on it, on it, discard enchanted jewelry. Basically, an armor for. Yep. So, random possessions. It's one common item. Please don't be some lame thing. There's something good. One. Yeah, lame thing. Lantern plus one to luck checks. Eh. Yeah, well, she has a flashlight. She can kill monsters with her lantern. Now, two spells. And let's see. Denying the ancient one. Ooh. Casting modifier minus one. Sanity cost two. In an upkeep, cast an exhaust. If you are driven insane or knocked unconscious during this turn, keep all of your items and clues. Uh, eh. Okay, well, spells a spell. And lastly, she gets one skill. I don't have. Any. I think I have a lot of favorable draws now. Just nay, most of it. Sneak plus one sneak. When you spend a clue token to add to any sneak check, add one extra bonus die. So she's extra sneaky. Sneaking. Yeah, that's Jacqueline Fine for you, and I will set her up also, and that was our characters, we're gonna go to the board. I did forget one thing, I have to pull out relationship in between the characters. So, we're gonna do them in the same order which we set them up now, so we start off with Dexter Drake as first player, Luke. Mark Harrigan and then Jacqueline Fine. Uh, so, oh, upside down. Dexter Drake and Luke will be sharing courageous inspirations. Either you or your partner may exhaust this card before making a horror check to gain plus one to the check. Now, Mark and uh, now Luke and Mark Harrigan will be sharing Misty Nights. <laughs> Anytime either you or your partner passes a spell check with two or more successes, the casting investigator may exhaust this card. If he does so, you and your partner each gain one sanity. Ooh. Spelly. Now, Mark and Jacqueline, they share something upside down. Survivors, I think it is. Either you or your partner may exhaust this card before making an away check to gain plus one to the check. Good, good. And lastly, Jacqueline and Dexter gonna share... Collectors. After the initial setup, anytime either you or your partner gets one or more common items or unique items from any game effect other than this card, the other may draw a random card of the same type and purchase it for, for the list price. Good, they have connections. That's awesome. Now that's the relationships done. And now we can go to the board. Now, this is how the board looks right now. We do have Innsmouth up here. We see, you can almost see the deep rising track up to the right corner there. Uh, we will keeping track of that if something happens. Now we have to dig out the um, Alice. Oh, one thing I have to check. Be right back. 
Yep, I just had to check if um, we had any Alice from Innsmouth. There weren't any. <laughs> so, just get me something to point with. We do have Jacqueline Fine up here in uh, the Curiosity Shop. We do have Dexter Drake down at Ye Old Magic Shop. Mark uh, Harrigan down here in South Church. And of course we have Luke Robinson slumbering away in Dreamlands Delayed. Now you see uh, first area. Yeah, so he's in the first part. That's correct. I have placed uh, clues at the unstable locations. Um, the Dark Fario is placed here, ready to go. Um, I could actually give that uh, some, so it's easier to see. And um, as we are playing with the Innsmouth, I have uh, added all cards I have from all expansions. Uh, in the decks, so we will we will seeing a lot of Innsmouth related stuff and also some Miskatonic University stuff. Now on that accord, we're gonna give ourselves some help this time. We're gonna play with the Bureau of Investigations. So it's a government institution that's gonna help us. When the Bureau of Inst Investigation is the institution, at the start of the game, place the agent tokens next to the institution sheets. Yes, those are these. These are the agent markers that's gonna help us. On the case, keener news followers, however, wondered at the prodigious number of arrests. The abnormally large force of men used in making them and the secrecy surrounding the disposals, disposal of the prisoners. Now, um, we can read. Uh, yeah, well, we can do the upkeep. For each monster token, compare the monster's toughness to the number of agent tokens in the same area. If the monster's toughness is equal or greater than the number of agent tokens, return one agent token from that area to the pool of agent tokens. If the monster's toughness is, is less than the number of agent tokens, return one agent token to the pool and then return the monsters to the monster's cup. Or in case of the spawn monster, where, where there ain't any spawn monsters. Any, at any point during his movement, if an investigator is in a street area, he may place one agent token in this street area for each two clue tokens he spends. Note that monsters ignore agent tokens when moving. Okay, so an investigator in a movement, I can use drop off two clues to place an agent in the streets. Those agents will help us kill monsters. Yeah? Okay. Protective custody. Picked up and dusted off by ready hands, he was found to be conscious, organically unhurt, and evidently cured of his sudden nervous attack. When a player is instructed to return an alley card to the box, he may instead place the card next to any of the expansion game boards, such as, well, in Smoth. So instead of discarding an alley, we will place it by Innsmouth. Uh, if an alley is, card is already next to the chosen expansion game board, the card is returned to the box. Now, if an investigator is in a location on one of those expansion game boards, he may spend five clue tokens to gain the alley card that has been placed next to that expansion card box uh, board. <laughs> so if we do have an alley here, uh, we can spend five clue tokens to pick up that alley. So that's something to take advantage of, just to give us a bit of upper hand in this fight. Now, uh, Alice, Alice, Alice. I have a stack of Alice here. I will be shuffling them and I will be pulling out 
11, I think it is, isn't it? Yes, 11, Alice. So let's give it a shuffle. And let's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, Alice. Uh, we get ah oh, we can take a look at that we'll see what we get we get Erica Carlisle plus two Spain spell gain a retainer card when you well she was just not that bad Thomas F Maloon uh, one lore plus one fight draw one spell you will keep him plus two horror you cannot be cursed well yes. Ryan Dean, plus one will, plus one sneak, draw one common item, okay. Uh, Sir William Brinton, plus one maximum stamina, discard to immediately restore your stamina to your maximum. Oh, that's good, it could be nice with a fight for the Ancient One. Dr. Ali Kafur, plus one will, plus one lore, such a unique item deck, taking the first tome you find, yes. David Packard, plus one fight, plus one sneak, draw one skill card when David Packard joins you. And Richard Upton Pickman, plus one luck, plus one speed, your attacks are not affected by physical resistance. Okay. Anna Caslow, plus two luck, gain two clue tokens when Anna Caslow joins you. And Eric Weiss, plus two away, you cannot be delayed. <laughs> and Sarah Danforth. Plus one focus, draw one exhibit item when Sarah Danforth joins you. Well, I think that will do just fine. I will, whoop, I will. I'm a shuffling. Well, we have to pick one either way if we get any Alice. So that's the Ali deck. We get that there. And I think we are about ready to draw our Mythos card and set things in motion. Let's have a look, see, yeah, I think so. So let's just dig out the topmost mythos card. I have shuffled the deck, it's huge and it's a pain to be shuffling it. So let's hope I don't need to reshuffle it. Oh, yeah, and I added uh, the Innsmouth monsters to my monster bag. I have to, I think, I have to invest in a bigger bag. If I'm gonna keep playing all the expansions or I have to get myself a garbage bag or something because it's huge. Now this is the first Mythos, mythos card. Whoop. Let's see what we get. Now Esoteric Order of Dagon. We do have that now. So that's top notch. We do get a gate there. Not at the witch house but at the Esoteric Order of the Dagon. And the first gate we get there is get to the city of the great race. Yep. So the clue at the esoteric order of Dagon is going away. We do get a doom on Ranth Tegoth, which is not good. A new clue appears at Devil Reef or Black Cave. In this case, Devil Reef. How nice, which are way out there. <laughs> now, yeah, we have to dig out a monster for the Esoteric Order of Dagoon. How cool is that? The first monster appears in Innsmouth. How fittingly. Let's get the down in this bag and put out something. We do pull out a flying monster, buy a key, yeah, well, that's not that bad, let me show you, buy a key, uh, it's uh, minus two to sneak by, it's a circular monster, um, minus one for will check, and one sanity loss, it's got one stamina, so it's easy to kill, plus zero in uh, fight check, and it hurts you for two stamina if it hits you. Placing that on the esoteric order of Dagon. 
now movement well that creature flies to the skies and does a check around in the neighborhood no investigators so it goes to the sky now in the sky it counts towards the monster limit in Arkham if it's just stayed in Innsmouth it wouldn't have counted towards the monster limit which are seven we do not have any squares or diamonds police offer reward for information it's a headline each investigator may spend any number of his clue tokens. For each clue tokens he spends, he gains two dollars. Now, anyone in need of dollars? Mark Harrigan, perhaps? He's got three clues, four dollars. You're in South Church. Does it cost anything to be blessed? Yeah, gate trophy, monsters. Nope. We're gonna leave that as it is. First Mythos cards drawn and the game is on. So that concludes my introduction and setup. I'll be back later with round one. Thank you all for watching. Uh, if I've done anything wrong let me know. I think I got it all right. Uh, we'll see. This is T-Man signing off for now. Bye.